All right, today we have what I call a good problem. And it's a good problem because we've added so many amazing features to our game that we're having performance problems now. Let's say that this guy right here that I've drawn a little arrow on is the player. This is like a top-down view, right? And he's surrounded by monsters. He's surrounded by, he's, he's surrounded by so many monsters that actually the game is kind of slowing down. It can't draw all of these monsters. We want to do something about that. This is called scene management. And the idea is to only draw things that the player can see. Only send to the graphics card what is in the player's view frustum. View frustum. Frustum. A frustum is just a mathy name for a pyramid. This green pyramid looking shape. It's a 3D kind of pyramid with a point pointing towards the player, the small end right here. I only drew, it has, it has four sides in this drawing, but in three dimensions it'll actually have six sides because it'll have a top and a bottom too. So it kind of makes this big pyramid. And we only want to draw items that are enemies, monsters that are inside that pyramid. And so we create this view frustum out of the player's current view. And I'll go over how to do that in another video. But for now, we're just going to test how to determine whether or not one of these monsters is inside the frustum. And to do that, we're going to do a plane intersection, a plane intersection algorithm. Section. The dog's eating over there. Sorry about that. But it'll be a slightly different kind of plane intersection algorithm as we did before. So here's our plane, and basically we have we have this entity, okay, this is our entity, represented by this circle, and we want to know which side of the plane the entity is on, because this plane is going to represent the side of our frustum, just like this, okay? And as before, our plane has two, two properties. It has a normal, which is a unit length vector, give it a little hat, that's perpendicular to the surface of the normal. But unlike the way we defined a plane last time, we're not going to just give it any point on the plane. We're actually going to use its, its distance, d, to the origin. This little, this little x right here is the origin. It's the point at which the coordinate system is at 0, 0. In fact, I'll do this in 3D, 0, 0, 0. And so we're going to find our plane. The plane, I'm not going to call it P, but it's a plane, is going to be defined by one normal and one D. Now, pay attention to this D because it's a little bit funky. Uh, it's not just the distance from the plane. It's actually it's funky because it's kind of a negative uh, number. It's a negative number because of, of how the plane is defined. Uh, you can think of D as the number of normal vectors that will get you from this plane back to the origin, okay? So like D times the normal vector will get you back to the origin. And you can see that D has to be a negative number in this case. To get this plane back to the origin, you have to, you have to turn N around backwards. So you have to multiply by a negative number of Ns. Anyway, that's all getting, uh, we're, we're, I'm covering that because it's gonna come in handy later. Let's get back to our plane intersection algorithm, okay? We have here the, uh, the entity that we're trying to see which side of the plane it's on. And it's going to have a vector, okay, a position vector that describes its position in space. I'm going to call that vector P. And what we're going to do is we're going to project this position vector onto the normal. Okay, and you'll see why we're doing that in just a minute. I'm going to do that over here. That is p dot n over n dot n times n. These are all uh, n hats, hat, 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 and this p is a vector. Now, you've seen this uh, projection algorithm before. I think this is actually the third time we've done it. And you really should have this, like, you should memorize this because it comes up all the time in game development. It's not hard. P dot N over N dot N times N to project a vector onto N. But 
Uh, okay, and so when, when we do that, we're going to get this vector p prime, and I'm going to draw it over. I'm going to draw it over here instead of uh, instead of over n. If you remember, uh, vectors don't care about what their position is. So I can draw the position anywhere, but the important thing is that the projected vector p, p prime is the projected vector, is parallel to n. It is also perpendicular to the plane. You can think of it as the component of p that goes in the same direction as n, okay? If that makes any sense. Hopefully it does. So the, the weird thing though is that the vector that we're projecting onto is a, a normal length, a unit length vector. Its length is one. And this is the amazing thing about projection, is that when you have a unit length vector, uh, the n dot n part of this vector is gonna turn out to be one. So I can just cross that off because it's one, and p dot n over one is just p dot n. So we get p dot n times n. So I bring this n vector over here. And actually, in truth, all we want is the is the quote unquote length part of of the of the projection. We just want a scalar value for how long it's going to be, and I'm going to call that e. We want e times n. So I'm going to call that number right here is kind of the length is e. Okay, so we can we can just totally get rid of this n hat value. And now we know e. e is just p dot n. You can think of dot products as a projection of p onto another vector, and it works really well if your other vector is unit length, because then all you need right here is p dot n. Okay, so now we notice that if we take e, okay, e is a vector that goes this way towards the, towards the same direction as the normal vector. So we're gonna take, next color, we're gonna take e, Okay, and we're gonna add D. You see that E and D kind of go in different directions. E goes up this way, D goes back that way. And so what we're gonna get is, new color, we're gonna get this guy right here. I'm gonna call him C. E, uh, I drew an E, I meant to draw a C. E plus D equals C. And C is the distance of this entity from the plane. And the really amazing thing is that if if p, like if my entity are, is over here, p prime will go in the opposite direction. p prime will be negative. And so the point is that if my entity is on the other side of the plane, then c will be negative, which is really cool. Because if c is positive, then we are in, if c is positive, then we're in this space up here. But if c is negative, then we're in this space down there. That's great. That means we can tell which side of the plane we're working with, okay? There's only one thing left to do, and that is that we want to know, okay, let's suppose, I'm going to draw a new, a new plane down here in this corner, okay? Let's suppose that our entity is only just inside. Here is the center. So technically C, in this case, C is going to be negative. It's going to be less than zero. But our entity is kind of peeking into the plane. We want C to be positive. We want to render our entity. We want it to act as if it's inside the plane. And so we're going to add the radius. We're going to add the radius of the sphere. Here's the radius right there. Okay. We're going to say C plus R. And so we're giving it a little bit of extra leeway so that we can count large entities as being inside the frustum so we make sure we draw them, okay? And now that we have this plane intersection algorithm, our frustum, like I mentioned before, has six planes, and we're just gonna do the calculation once for every plane in the frustum. Once again, that is E, and E just, e just amounts to P dot N, P dot N, plus D plus R. So this is our formula that we're gonna go into and implement our view frustum culling algorithm with. Let's see in the code section. Here we go, now I think you'll find that uh, the, the actual, it happens a lot in, in game development where you, you spend all this time doing the math and then the actual 
uh, implementation is pretty easy. It's almost a direct John Carmack quote. So Vec center is what is was P in our math section. So P, we're going to dot that with the with the normal of each plane. Notice that I'm that I'm doing this for loop, so I'm doing this operation for all six planes, and I'm going to add D to that, just like our formula says, and then our radius, which was R in our math formula. And if this is less, it's ever if it's less than or equal to zero, then our entity is outside of this plane, and so we and so the sphere does not intersect with the frustum, and and therefore we will not render the entity. If all six tests pass, then the the sphere must be inside the entity since it's on the positive sign of all six planes. So uh, now let's go to our this is our draw function. And this is the part where we decide whether or not to draw this entity. And I've previously built this frustum. Again, I'm going to go over exactly how to do that in another video. But here we all we have to do is test for is our is the sphere inside the function inside the frustum. And I've set up uh, some calculations that will give us the exact center of a sphere with that that completely encapsulates the object that we're trying to render. And so if it does not intersect with our sphere, then we're going to, uh, sorry, we're just going to continue continue on to the next entity. That's it. Really, frustum culling is a very simple and effective way to speed up a game a lot. And here we have frustum culling working. Nothing is different. What? <laughs> That's... Uh, uh, how do I normally we'd had some kind of entity counter that shows us how many entities we're rendering so that when we face away We can see the numbers going down, but I don't have any kind of GUI implemented in this game yet or user interface or anything So what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna reverse this test I'm gonna return true if it's outside and false if it's inside or what or wait did I get that back? Uh, strike that reverse anyway, we're gonna we're gonna reverse that test, and you can see now, now I'm rendering everything that's outside the view frustum, which means I'm not rendering anything at all. So let's let's put that back. That was just a quick test to see if it worked, and it does. So great, that should do it for for uh, frustum culling. Next time we're gonna sort our scene so that we can use a painter's algorithm and only render things in the, in the back first which is useful for you know I'll, I'll just I'll explain all that next time see you then